What HBO got right and wrong in the staircase drama? Few documentaries in the world of true crime have had the effect of the staircase. The 2004 series chronicles the story of American novelist Michael Peterson, whose wife was discovered dead. Peterson claimed her death was the result of a fall down a flight of stairs, but he was convicted of her murder. Kathleen's murder was a complex case with countless twists and turns, and to this day, true crime enthusiasts remain strongly split over the case. Adding a fresh dimension to the narrative, HBO Max has transformed the story into a drama series starring Colin Firth and Tony Collette. In addition to following the Peterson family, the program also follows the creation of the documentary, prompting viewers to reconsider the amount of truth any given documentary can provide. Welcome to Bad Things. In this video, we're going to look at what HBO got right and wrong in the Staircase drama. But even if the truth is unknown, as shown by the Staircase on HBO Max, there are some components of the drama that we know to be inaccurate. Here is a primer to the truth and fiction of the Staircase on HBO Max. What HBO got right? Kathleen Peterson. Kathleen Peterson was a secondary character to Michael in the original documentary. The new take on The Staircase provides a great deal of insight into Kathleen Peterson's life. We see her juggling her precarious profession in information services at Nortel Networks, her position as a mother of five, and other personal details that hint at her fatigue and mild discontentment with life. Kathleen, along with her two sisters and brother, were raised in Pennsylvania and studied engineering at Duke University. Prior to meeting Michael, she was married to Fred Atwater and had one daughter, Caitlin, with him. Kathleen did work at the quickly disintegrating Nortel before her death on December 9, 2001. Some specifics of the show, such as Kathleen's incident with the bats in her attic or her mishap in the pond during a party, may never be revealed. Did these events occur? While these events may be partially true, we simply do not know how accurate the show's depiction of them is. The Trial Most of the trial depicted in The Staircase is true. In fact, the whole trial was captured on film, and much of it was included in the documentary. It is true that Michael used to write a column for the Herald Sun, in which he often expressed his dissatisfaction with the performance of local law enforcement. It is also true that he believed his column caused a witch hunt in the wake of Kathleen's death. It may even be true that the district attorney succeeded in persuading the medical examiner to list blunt force trauma as the cause of Kathleen's death. David Rudolph, Michael's attorney, verified to the Charlotte Observer that everything from the autopsy images, the family split, the male escorts, and the blowpoke hypothesis is mostly accurate. The rumor is true that Michael had found his adoptive girl's mother at the bottom of a stairway decades ago. Rudolph said, I think they got a lot right about the tunnel vision that the police and the prosecutors had, based on blood at the scene and nothing else, and how that tunnel vision then carried over to the medical examiner, and how the medical examiner's tunnel vision carried over to the family, and how Candace and Kathleen's daughter, Caitlin and Laurie, ended up turning on Michael, even though from the very start, not even one of them thought that that was even a possibility. While most of the trial is correct, HBO Max omitted a few crucial aspects. An expert testified in essence that Michael had manufactured the crime scene. The police discovered a bottle of wine and two neatly arranged wine glasses, but Kathleen's fingerprints were not on them, and her autopsy revealed that she had a low blood alcohol level. This portion of the case was left out. Other noteworthy omissions include Caitlin's courtroom testimony and the fact that Rudolph's wife, Sonia Pfeiffer, was a reporter who covered the case. Both the documentary and the drama omitted the fact that Kathleen's sister, Candace Zamperini, accused Pfeiffer of impropriety during her testimony. She pretended to be my friend. She came to my home for an exclusive interview, Zamperini said. She invited me to dine. She told me she believed my sister had fallen down the staircase. 
Sonia Pfeiffer had the hubris to come to Maplewood Cemetery without an invitation to hold hands with our family at Kathleen Peterson's headstone. Sophie Brunet Fans of the documentary may be shocked by one of the most peculiar twists in HBO's The Staircase. Michael develops a connection with a French woman, and it is subsequently revealed to be one of the documentary's editors, Sophie Brunet. Brunet, according to documentary director Jean-Xavier Lestrade, fell in love with Peterson. After Michael begins his term in prison, the adaptation depicts him beginning correspondence with Sophie Brunet, who was intrigued by him throughout the editing process. Brunet went on to describe how she arrived at the conclusion that Michael did not commit the crime while working on the project. Brunet realized she had developed feelings for Michael when she collapsed upon hearing the news that he had been found guilty. Brunet mailed Michael a copy of In Search of Lost Time and started exchanging letters with him, just as she did in the HBO drama. Brunet eventually started paying Michael jail visits every two to three months for four years. According to Peterson, the new relationship was life-altering. In the end, the two entered romantic relationship that lasted until 2017. Even though the new HBO Max program is not entirely factual, it demonstrates an undeniable truth. The more we re-examine a case via a new media, the murkier it gets. Clayton Peterson The series drops hints at Peterson's run-in with the law, but hardly expands on it. Clayton, who was 19 years old at the time, was taken into custody in 1994 for allegedly trying to set the administration building at Duke University on fire. Clayton had assembled a pipe bomb, put it in a quart jar of gasoline, and lit the fuse. When arrested, Peterson claimed the fuse was cut so that it would not detonate the bomb, though federal authorities doubted his claim. The Alcohol, Tobacco, Firearms and Explosives Bureau discovered six more assembled explosive devices hidden in the attic while searching the Peterson house. Although nobody was hurt, these charges were very serious. Clayton Peterson was given a sentence that would put him behind bars for a total of four years. During that period, Michael Peterson was the one who was responsible for making the trips to the jail. The Owl Theory The new HBO series is the first to portray the bizarre Owl Theory. In 2009, one of Michael Peterson's attorneys, T. Lawrence Pollard, who was also Michael Peterson's former neighbor, suggested that an owl may have been responsible for the death of Kathleen Peterson. During the preliminary investigation, a single very minute feather was discovered embedded in Kathleen's hair. It was stored on a microslide, but it was never brought up in court as evidence. Kathleen's hair was washed and shaved in preparation for the autopsy, and Pollard suggested that any evidence of further tiny feathers may have been lost in the process. A little wooden splinter, which was analyzed and shown to have originated from a tree, was also found. Dr. Alan Van Norman observed that two of Kathleen's wounds on her skull seemed to be similar to wounds that would have been caused by a pair of talons that belonged to a huge bird of prey. Kate P. Davis, executive director of the Raptor rehabilitation nonprofit Raptors of the Rockies, stated that it is not unusual for owls to attack humans, that they can kill animals much larger than themselves, and that the lacerations on Kathleen's head resembled those made by the talons of a barred owl. Barred owls were known to reside in the woods close to the house owned by the Petersons, as stated in the official document that was compiled in support of the motion to investigate the feather evidence. On the evening of the tragic event that led to her death, Kathleen had been decorating her lawn for Christmas. The owl theory suggested that a raptor could have mistaken the decorations for prey and gotten tangled in Kathleen's hair before she ran inside while bleeding, which could explain the blood that was found on the front walkway and doorframe. This theory was supported by the fact that the blood was found on the front walkway. The Staircase in whatever form, documentary, drama or print, will fascinate true crime enthusiasts for a long time still. They believe that the truth will come out someday, 
due to new evidence. We all wait expectantly till then. Thank you for watching Bad Things. Hit the subscribe button, like button and notification bell and share our channel for our up and coming true crime videos.